Receive his touch. Receive his touch. Receive his touch. Receive Receive the touch of his power. Receive the touch of his presence. Receive the touch of his anointed. Receive the Give you the praise and the honor because you are God. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name. Wave your hands and give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the praise. Give El Shaddai the praise. Give El Ayon the praise. Shake the hands of three people and welcome to the presence of the Lord. Tell you are welcome. 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 And then you might be seated in the presence of the Lord. precious name of Jesus Christ. You will never live here the same way you have come in Jesus name. We especially welcome the presence of the executive secretary, the Nigeria Christian Pilgrim Commission, his wife, Reverend Uja Toruja and his wife. The Lord bless you. You are welcome, sir. Please. Hallelujah. I welcome you to this month of character for divine proofs and um, seeing that it is the blessing Sunday we are looking at the connection between character and the blessing character and the blessing and we shall be looking at the book of Psalms 24 verse 4 to 5 as our text in this service. And before we go there, our objective in this message is to understand the relationship between uprightness of character and the blessing of God. This is two of the subject, character and the blessing. Psalm 24, verse 4 to 5. He said, He that has clean hands and a pure heart and has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. That person he shall receive the blessing from the Lord. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. What a direct scripture. He that has clean hands, a pure heart, he has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He that is, that person shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. So there is a direct relationship between righteousness and blessedness. It is not possible to uphold righteousness 
and not end in the realm of blessedness. Righteousness is directly proportional to blessedness. If your hands are clean, your blessings cannot escape. If your hands are clean, your blessings are sure. It doesn't matter how long it takes. If your hands are clean, your blessings are sure. If your hands, if your heart is pure. You say he that has a clean hands and a pure heart. If your heart is pure, your blessings are sure. It doesn't matter how long it takes. He said he has not lifted up his soul unto vanity. If your humility is intact, your blessing is intact. He said no sworn deceitfully. If you are not a liar, no devil can deny you your portion. This is too direct. It doesn't matter how long it takes. The path of truth is the path of triumph. And the path of lie is the path of losses. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? The whole of this month, this is what you will be hearing. In case you don't like this kind of subject, you are in the wrong month. It's ruggedness of character. If your, if your hands are not clean, whatever you seem to have is temporary. Tell you the truth. Whatever you get with unclean hands have no future. Has no future. If you doubt me, ask Adam. He gained one fruit and lost a whole garden. If your heart is not pure, your future is not clear. The life of arrogance and pride and haughtiness is the, is, is, is the doorway to emptiness. Haughtiness equals emptiness. Ask Lucifer. Finally, whatever you get by lies does not have a future. I preached on the tragedy of evil money about... Um, Three months ago, thereabout, and it was aired on AIT and everywhere. And one of um, our officers here told me, he says, Sir, please, can you air this on AIT and all national television? I said, Why do you say so? He said, Because I am in the civil service, and that is what we are suffering. And our superiors will claim that people are going for training. They will collect the money and people went nowhere. He said, anytime I, we complain, he said, relax, your own time is coming. That's what he said. Your time is coming. What time? Time to steal? Time to divert people's destiny and divert people's money and say people will travel abroad and didn't travel nowhere and say we went for training and went nowhere? That is calamitous money. It ends the, the it ends the people who trade therein. It ends them in disaster. If that is the only way to get me, may you die in poverty. But you will never die in poverty. You will never die in poverty because God is a rewarder of righteousness. He that 
that has, a, has clean hands and a pure heart has not lifted his heart to vanity, has not lied to get things. He said that person by dole, he must receive the blessing of the Lord. Irrespective of how terrible the system is, irrespective of how disastrous the, 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 the situation is, he must receive the blessing of the Lord. He shall receive the blessing of the Lord. And I want to prophesy to somebody, Maybe because of your stand for uprightness, you're victimized. You've been castigated, ostracized, rejected. The God who vindicated Daniel shall vindicate you. The God who vindicated Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he shall vindicate you. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. Say louder, believers, say amen. Listen, righteousness may be slow, but the results are sure. Unrighteousness may appear fast, but the end of it is death. Take your seat. So, in the first service, we looked at the example of Adam. How he was blessed in the atmosphere of innocence. Until sin came in and then the curse came. In this second service, we shall look at the example of Noah. How in the midst of a corrupt world, he is blessed. In Genesis chapter 6 verse 5 to 8, Genesis chapter 6 verse 5 to 8, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast. And the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Jump to verse 11 and I'll read to verse 13. But Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. The earth also was corrupt before God. Corrupt. The word corruption started since Genesis. The earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth. And behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Look at verse 17 to 18. He was asking Noah to make an ark. He said, and behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. Now, but with thee, Will I establish my covenant again with you? I will release the blessing. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wives and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. Now you jump to Genesis chapter 9, verse 1 to 3, and then you see the blessing of Noah. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb that I have given you all things. God, God bless his word in Jesus' name. We're in the situation where the whole world was drowning. And then one man was floating. It's a matter of righteousness. The whole world was sinking. One man was floating. That is why I, 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 I say that it, it, is, it, is, it is gameful to be upright. And it is 
profitable to be unrighteous. But take note of three things I will say from this passage. Number one, uprightness of character is an escape route from disaster on earth. Uprightness of character is an escape route. For when men say they are cast down, you will say there is a lifting up. Noah and his family escaped by standing for what is right. Men determined to stand for what is right. Even if you are the last man standing. But if you are in a situation, and let me say this now, if you are in a situation where a system refused to change, instead of you being buried in the system, step out. Uh, instead of you being buried honorably, Uprightness character is an escape route from disaster in the earth. Escape route. Lot escaped the flames of Sodom and Gomorrah. He escaped it. The flames and the wife decided to look back, became a pillar of salt. Secondly, Uprightness of character places a seal of distinction on the upright. It places a seal of distinction on the upright. A seal of distinction. There was a school, one of my, uh, my, one of my children went that was so disastrous during exam. As if the teachers were covenanted to ensure that the children pass by hook or crook. Say, excuse me, sir, I don't understand this question. He said, that this is the answer. Ah. The system was so terrible and the baby can't complain. I said, number one, carry earplugs, plug your ears so you don't hear the answers they, are, they give at any time. Number two, if because you refused to cheat, you passed, you failed. Because you refused to cheat, when you come home, I will congratulate you. But if you pass by cheating, that is misery. She heard what I said. Blocked her ears. Thickened her skin. Came out in shining colors. Still shining till tomorrow. Uprightness. It places a seal of distinction. It sets your life apart. That was set Noah apart from this world. It sets you apart. I am here to announce today that there are people among us in this generation and to not belong. God will set you apart. As you refuse to do what they do, God will show our world that it pays to stand upright, that it pays to do the right thing. You believe and say the Lord, Amen. Yeah. The first dollar billionaire in the world, take your seat, John D. Rockefeller, was a man who embraced God, the tutelage of his mother, and ran with that embrace. Never smoked, never drank, paid his tithe from the first one dollar that entered his hand. One day he gave $120 million to a university that was to be founded by his church. And the press said to him, Why are you wasting so much money on charity and on God? He said, God gave it to me in the first instance. And I'm giving it back to God. Any problem? What's your business? Such people showed that righteousness don't put people at the back. 
Abraham showed it. Isaac showed it. Job showed it. Job showed it. Joseph showed it. Daniel showed it. That the most upright in their generation were also the most right up. That they were upright and they were right up. Nobody was higher than them in their days. And our days will not be an exception. That we shall be upright and we shall be right up. Say it loud, amen. amen. Thirdly, uprightness of character attracts the blessing of God. It attracts. It attracts. It say, he that has clean hands, a pure heart, has not lifted his heart to vanity, hasn't sworn deceitfully. He say, he shall receive the blessing of God. It pays. In conclusion at this end, how is it that character brings the blessing? What is it that makes, how does character, the character of uprightness attract the blessing of God? Number one, uprightness of character keeps the upright in the presence of God and the presence of God is the depot of the blessing. In Psalm 15 verse 1 to 5, we saw that the presence of God, he said, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He said in verse 2, he that walketh uprightly, walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He said, he that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. That is the person who is living upright dwells in God's presence and the presence of God is the depot of the blessing. In thy presence is fullness of joy. Psalm 16 verse 11. And at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. The combination is called the blessing. Secondly, how does character, the character of uprightness bring the blessing number two? Living by scriptural precepts and principles qualifies and positions the upright for the blessing. Scriptural precepts and principles, when you live by it, you are positioned, you are qualified and positioned for the blessing. It's, it's the same way that a man who loves his wife unconditionally will enjoy unconditional submission from the, from the wife. And the reverse is true. The woman who submits to her husband unconditionally will experience unconditional affection. That is, she doesn't need to beg the man where things are done right. That is how scripture is. If you obey God and live by his precepts, according to Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2, which I'll be reading the third service, you have came diligently to his voice. All this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. You, don't, you won't be begging for him to bless you if you have done what it takes to be blessed. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Somebody say the loud amen. amen. For example, you don't need to beg God for money if you do what brings money. Hello? That's how this matter is. And finally, number three, the character of uprightness establishes favor for the upright, both before God and man. Charac the character of uprightness establishes favor for the upright, both before God and man. There is something you will do that will endear you to God. I went to our site yesterday. And I met an Indian and a Chinese together. They came to look at things. I think they are trying to advertise to us sound. The other one came from China. And his friend, an Indian man from Lagos, but them, the, the, the one from Lagos brought him. He said they are, they are businessmen. And the moment they saw me, they walked me. He said, Pastor, the Indian, Pastor and the Chinese, I came from Lagos. And I was praying in my heart that you should come here before I go. And you have come. Please bless me. Went on his knees. 
I said, so these people also behave like our people. <laughs> the way he was struggling to be blessed, to be, I hugged him first. Placed my hand on his back. Oh, that overwhelmed him. Led them to Christ. Laid hands on them. Blessed them. Then I told him, can you be in church today? He said, no, I have to go to Lagos. And I said, okay, I'm sending material to you on Monday. Get all your detailed contact, DHL contact to this man. The social engineer on that, And I will send materials to you. His behavior positioned him naturally for faith. That is with man yet. How much more God? How many of you know that behavior can open door or close door? You see, there is a level of power you will experience when you see some people. And what you want to do is to avoid them as much as possible. To hold your respect. That is how it is with God too. That there are character traits we manifest. When Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, in Numbers 25, ran to execute vengeance on the behalf of God. When a man brought a Midianitish woman and was committing immorality in the camp. How many of you remember that story? He went with a javelin, pierced them through. God said, this man has touched my heart. Finhas, the son of Eliezer, because of this that you have done, they established a covenant of peace with you and with your children and with your generation. You have moved me. And for moving me, I bless you. That is what happens. There is a favor with man and God that positive character brings. And I see that as your portion today. Please, beloved brothers and sisters, don't be tired of doing the right thing. It may appear as if the right thing takes a longer route. But at the end of the day, it is a surer route. It's a more confirmed route. It's a more positive route. It's a more enduring route. Judas entered the transaction that cost him his eternity. Don't do that. It's a new day for you. Stand on your feet with a loud shout of amen. <laughs> a louder shout of amen. <laughs> Lift your hands and let's appreciate God. His word to us this morning. Father, we give you the praise and the honor. We appreciate you for your word this morning. Honor to your name. Adoration to your name. Worship to your name. El Shaddai, Elion, Adonai, Jehovah Mekadesh, Jehovah Keren Yesha, Olamore. We worship and adore you. Lift your hands and lift your voice. Lift your hands and lift your voice. Thank you for your word to me today. Thank you, Lord, for your word to me today. Thank you, Lord, for your word to me today. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. With your hands lifted, you are going to ask God and say after me, say, Father, I receive the grace to maintain uprightness of character. That character that will keep me in your presence. I receive the grace to maintain it. I receive the grace to live by scriptural precepts and principles. I receive the grace, oh Lord, to live in accordance with your word and to experience favor before you and before man. I receive the grace to be upright. Lift your voice and speak to God. I receive that grace. I receive that grace. I receive that grace. I receive that grace. Go ahead and speak to God.